If we want to talk about truly visiting the Antipodes, then New Zealand is just what the doctor ordered. The city of Auckland is one of the most important ocean crossroads in the world and hosts the branch offices of the largest world banks and other institutions. In addition, one has the feeling that wherever one wants to go on this globe, everything is just as far. From the Czech Republic, for example, we were given the choice of traveling via Asia or via America. Both routes are just as long and demand 25 hours in the air. And yet it's surprising that despite the enormous distances, New Zealand does not feel in the least exotic. Even if there's a very colorful mix of races and nationalities, it's the American-European lifestyle that predominates, and which we know well. If we add the indubitably beautiful landscape, it's no wonder that we often hear New Zealand described as an earthly paradise. However, the locals have a whole number of quite unheavenly problems. One of them is the tense and smouldering relationship between the native Maori peoples and the later settlers. Recently, one of Auckland's main attractions almost fell victim. The so-called Maori tree on one of the 40-odd volcanoes under which Auckland is situated The Maoris wanted to cut down this centuries-old tree to draw attention to the alleged abuse of their rights. Our small Czech expedition, however, did not have time for a detailed discovery of New Zealand's problems, let alone to contribute to solving them. We were in town for an entirely different This sign shows just how far New Zealand is off the beaten track. It stood right next to the grounds where the technical inspection was taking place for the vehicles taking part in the famous Rally New Zealand. This component of the World Championship for makes and of the Asian Pacific Championship could now boast a rather exotic event. For the first time in history, they could welcome Czech competitive drivers, specifically the team from Škoda Motorsport. It's no wonder then that wherever the Felicia kit cars turn up, they have been the subject of unfeigned interest among fans, experts and journalists.
The technical inspection itself in New Zealand is a sort of amusement park, not lacking in the usual refreshments, and where amusement park attractions are replaced by competition cars and crews. Thanks to the reputation which preceded them, the locals instantly judged the Czech team as among the best. Together with Team Seat, Team Škoda was considered as the greatest favourite in the two-wheel drive contest regardless of the fact that Seat and other makes have much stronger cars at their disposal than the wee Škoda Felicia with its 1500 engine. This millstone was willingly donned by Team Motorsport due to its excellent results in the World Championship of makes as well as the shocking victory the year before last in the World Cup and then with an even weaker 1300 engine. No wonder that the technical inspection, even here in New Zealand, was more than a merely formal occasion. On the one hand, the inspection people were trying to dig up some sensational and unfair advantage in the motor to explain the excellent results. And on the other, this further increased the professional interest among the technically minded in this exotic little buggy. In addition, there are still memories of imported Škoda cars in this part of the world, and some of the old 100 series can even be seen on the roads. And the Škoda 110 used to be a name to be reckoned with on the New Zealand competitive circuits. So we found out that despite a few years of recent silence, the name Škoda is not entirely unknown. The technical inspection came off well, and so the small Škoda brigade can set off, including various mechanised trucks which the team members managed to put together from some borrowed lorries for the purpose. There's a moment or two left for some minor adjustments in the rented workshop. Drivers Pavel Sibera and Emil Trinner are redirecting the headlights for the local conditions, i.e. left-hand drive. while co-drivers Peter Gross and Pavel Stantz are revising the instructions for the mechanics since the severe rains have washed away some of the roads and the route has therefore been changed a little. So, time to hit the road, Jack, and Team Motorsport is following some further instructions from the organisers, playing the role of one of the main attractions of the Rally New Zealand display procession to take place in the Auckland Amusement Park in the municipal district of Manukau. There's just under four hours left to go. The weather has lightened up after many weeks, lots of people have come, and so our expedition is passing quite a pleasant little Sunday afternoon. All the more so, since the organizer's forecast has come true, and the Škoda team is truly the most sought-after member of the display known as the Rally Show. A little ways off are the big boys. For example, the leading man in the world championship, Mekinen, his Mitsubishi stalemate, Barnes, then the robust team Subaru No. 2, Ericsson and Liati, not to mention the many local stars and starlets. Simply a great deal of interest, 
and it's all our boys can do to evade the clutches of the fans, take their cars away, and have a moment to prepare themselves psychologically for the evening start of the introductory speed trial. A short one to be run on the local rallycross circuit. speed trial on the Auckland Oval, featuring an artificial jump and a Ford, here we see the Team Seat number one, Weber and Homer, was more or less another attraction for the spectators. The times achieved by the struggles on the circuit differed only in a matter of seconds. Although, as we well know, those seconds can prove crucial, and so there was no slacking today. This is also the case for Pavel Sibera and Peter Gross, with their starting number eight. There, Felicia had its work cut out for it with the mud from the previous rains, together with its performance handicap and its two-wheel drive. But they managed, right behind the best team of Mekinen and Ericsson. But here we're talking a hefty four-wheel, two-liter turbocharger job. Sibera was ten seconds behind, or rather nine seconds. Emil Trinner and Pavel Stanz took a second longer for their rounds. And so this introduction turned out superbly for our lads. All the more so, since they now occupy first and second in the two-wheel drives, with Strong behind them in a Daihatsu Charade, and only in the next two positions the feared Seats, not to mention the Peugeots, Hyundais, Kias, Hondas, Toyotas, Suzukis and Mitsubishi. And this was a lineup of 76 cars, 26 of which were two-wheel drives. Very promising indeed. The fight was on, of course, for the absolute leadership. Number three here is Pierre Liatti and Fabrizia Pons in a Subaru. They ended up with the third best time. And a delight for the fans was the confrontation between Subaru number one, Kenneth Eriksson and Stefan Parmander, and Mitsubishi number two, with Tommy Mekinen and Seppo Hariane. For Subaru and Mitsubishi are the hottest candidates for victory, not only of the World Championships, but also for the Asian Pacific Championship, which is the most important rally series of all in this neck of the world. So even if the stadium runs lasted on average one and a half to two minutes, the fans had something to watch. Well, judge for yourselves. Although the cars are on the course for barely a minute, the Team Škoda Motorsport mechanics have been very careful about their babies, mainly because of the early start on the true first stage on a demanding gravel course. 
We've already mentioned the perfect adaptation of the local lorries into genuine accompanying vehicles. But let's talk a little more about the technical details of overseas contests and what it means for our team. This team especially, when Skoda has headed across the waters three times. All the shipping had to be organized thoroughly, with men and materials moving about to Argentina, back to Europe, then to New Zealand and Australia. And it's all the more demanding since absolutely everything has to be thus imported. None of the local spare parts can be counted on. Even the voltage and the plugs of the local mains are different. Most of the tools have to be brought over, as well as light bulbs, screws, etc. Basically, whatever they forget, they simply won't have. However, maximum attention is now being devoted to the Rally New Zealand. A rally for which our drivers have been training in borrowed cars with right-hand steering. So it is a paradox that they now have to get used to the good old-fashioned left-hand steering once again during the contest. Problems, problems. The first speed trial of the first stage. Let's go over the starting lineup once again. Number one, as we can see, Ericsson and Parmander in a Subaru. Number two belongs to Mekinen and Haryana in a Mitsubishi. Number three is Liate and Pons, Subaru. Brits, Barnes and Reed are riding Mitsubishi at number four. Number five is to be driven by the local Matadors, Bourne and Vincent in a Subaru. And here's our lads. Number six is Emil Trinner and Pavel Stanz, Skoda Felicia kit car. Right behind the Škoda crew is our first serious competitor, the team of Puras and Del Barrio in a Seat. They're pinned in on both sides by Škodas. Number eight is Pavel Sibra and Petr Gross. But the second Škoda is itself pinned in by two Seats. Here we have Erwin Weber and Manfred Himmer. This is a Proton car with a Malaysian crew of Singh Or. And the other protagonists are both exotic and unknown for us. Koreans, Japanese, Australians and local New Zealanders. All of them in Asian cars. The most common cars here are Subaru and Mitsubishi followed by Toyota, and then 13 other names, each with one to three cars, including our Škoda. And the drivers? They come from 16 countries altogether, mostly New Zealanders and Japanese. Some of them excellent, some of them less excellent. Here, for example, is Guest from Australia whose fluttering ride made good in the end. Basically, a good time to be had by all, including the local fauna, glad to be out in the better weather. Ericsson and Parmander are doing what they can. But surprisingly, they've taken a bit of a beating during the speed trials, not only from their greatest rivals, McKinnon and Haryana, but also from several others. Definitely a surprise.
But Mackinnon and Hariani fared even worse in the first stage. Although reigning supreme after 10 speed trials, by more than a minute, leading the absolute ranking, they bumped a wheel against an exposed route on speed trial 11, and the fun was over. Too bad, they were really doing very well. Liati and Pons are in excellent shape. With their skillful driving, they hung on near the top in the running ranking, and then, at the conclusion of the stage, fought their way right up to the lead. Also, thanks to Mekinen's troubles. Barnes and Reed have also been riding their Mitsubishi well and are only six seconds behind the leading crew at the end of the first stage. And here's the first two-wheel drive in the starting lineup. Emil Trinner and Pavel Stanz in their Škoda Felicia kit car. Right from the start, they've been keeping contact with the leaders of the classification for the World Championship for Makes. And actually, their only real competitors are their colleagues Sibra and Gross, and then the pair of company Seats. Among this foursome, Trinner and Stanz finished the first stage with an excellent second place. The best time among the two-wheel drives after the first day was clocked in by Puras and Del Barrio from the company Team Seat. They rode very well indeed and managed to take full advantage of their superior performance compared with the Škoda and its half-litre deficit. The Spaniards, however, were given a fairly rough time by this gruesome twosome. Pavel Sibra and Petter Gross from the Czech team Skoten Motorsport. Our boys have been cruising for a bruising. They cleaned up on three speed trials and ensured a very tense drama for the top spot on the remaining ones. Unfortunately, this tight rivalry lasted only until the 11th speed trial, 
when the infamous exposed root tripped them up and landed them right next to the hapless Mekinen. And so an otherwise insignificant piece of wood became the root of favourites for both the main categories of the Rally New Zealand. And not only that, the same root also tipped over Brian Stokes's Ford and his somersaults barely avoided Mekinen's busted Mitsubishi and Shibaru Skoda. Fortunately, in the end, the only damage was a wheel broken and hopes extinguished. But the rest of the car should survive to fight another day. So the final score at the end of the first stage, 2-1 for Seat. Both Ibizas continued in the contest, even if the experienced matador of Erwin Weber, with his fellow driver Manfred Hummer, had to be satisfied with third due to technical difficulties, and also due to Trinner's excellent ride. The first stage could not have disappointed anybody. It provided everything that a rally ought to, and both the absolute lead as well as the two-wheel drive lead were subject to dramatic strife, enough to make everybody look forward to the next stage. The second stage leads the contestants along several hundred kilometers of beautiful mountain landscape. After the severe rains, the course had to be shortened a little, but the weather turned for the better long ago, so nothing could prevent the normal continuation of the jousting. The fact that either a Mitsubishi or a Subaru would lead the pack was expected by almost everybody, but that it would be Liati and Pond beat all the odds. And as you can see, they're leading and deserve every success. Barnes and Reed have been fighting for their make like lions. Anyway, their loss against the leader was minimal after the first stage, a mere six seconds. So they were still very much in the game. Nor did Ericsson and Parmander spare any thought of throwing in the towel, even if a three-quarter minute deficit is already something. But anything can happen. The local heroes Mech Andruya and Haldane offered up a diabolic ride. Their conception of life, which might be called through hell and high water, is bearing fruit for the moment in the form of fourth place overall, even if the deficit against the leaders is more than five minutes. An abyss. So the New Zealand landscape has provided a fantastic backdrop for this performance which must indeed fully satisfy the spectators. And the two-wheel drives played out much more than a secondary role. Jesus Puras and Carlos del Barrio, the Spanish team and their Spanish car, have driven perfectly and are leading. But they haven't been able to relax for a second because they can feel the danger of the winged arrow at their heels. The arrow in question belongs to the Škoda Felicia of Emil Trinner and Pavel Stanz. They've been nipping and biting their rivals right from the first speed trial of the second day, and have certainly scared them with a striking reduction in the lead. 
Whoever imagined that Skoda would spare their orphaned baby in the field and drive safely obviously doesn't know Emil Trinner. Erwin Weber had a car in perfect shape. He drove as best he could, but simply did not have enough Schutzbar to catch up on Trinner. In fact, the evening after this stage, he came over to the Skoda camp in person, and in a display of rare sportsmanship, admitted this. So even after the second day, the two-wheel drive ranking was the following. Puras, Trinner, Weber, and what's more, their struggle represented the ninth, 10th, and 11th place in the absolute order. So a beautiful day, all told. And we're not only talking about the weather. And look at this. Right at the end, it's as if New Zealand wanted to confirm all the rumours about its distinctive winters. Rain, wind, what more did I say? We know all about it from this year's summer. The updated ranking, however, is more important for the moment. Barnes and Reed lead in their Mitsubishi, as if they wanted to heal the wound left by McKinnon's departure. Ericsson and Parmander in their Subaru after their initial embarrassment, have finally yanked themselves up to second place, although with almost a minute's delay behind the leaders. Four seconds behind their teammates come Liati and Pons in the second Subaru. They were leading for a long time, but lingered and lounged for so long on the 16th and 21st speed trials that they could no longer afford to think of golden reeds. While Mech Andrew and Haldane are fourth, their deficit on the above three teams is now around 15 minutes. Even so, the local contestants on their Subaru legacy deserve admiration and recognition. And look what we have here. After the hopelessly overcast sky, the clouds are rent in twain, and the beautiful countryside is spotlighted here and there by the sun. Here are the Australians Guest and O'Brien, fifth overall and the best of the N group. Now let's look at the two-wheel drives. The permanent struggle between the Škoda and the pair of Seats was the rule for a long time. Buras and Del Barrio have been under intense pressure from our boys. Right from the first speed trial of the third day, they got 20 seconds, on the second another five, but their motor caved in on the next one. They only had two speed trials to go, but even such tragedies as these belong to the world of the route. Emil Trinner and Pavel Stanz and their Skoda Flitzia kit car this time were simply unbeatable, and they fully played out their role as favourites. They won the first three speed trials on the last day convincingly and let their rivals taste victory by a second in the last two. By then, however, Emil Trinner was driving for sheer pleasure, both his and that of the fans. Weber and Himmer were once again going full out, and yet their deficit against our boys after two stages grew even bigger. Owen Weber again paid his respects and declared that if Trinner had had a two-litre job as he had, 
the bad boys and the big cars would have had some serious problems. But they had them just the same. The fantastic battle of the two-wheel drives proved to be a great magnet for the spectators. And what's even more interesting, the name of Škoda, for many still unknown even yesterday, was now on everybody's lips. And here's the closing tour around the stadium to the victory ramp. In the absolute ranking, the victors are the British Richard Barnes and Robert Reed in their Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. Although their arrival was not the most impressive. The silver medal belongs to Kenneth Eriksson and Stefan Parmanda, the Swedes in their Subaru Impreza. Third place belongs to the Italians, Piero Liatti and Fabrizia Pons, again in a Subaru. And so this was the threesome of the absolute best for the evaluation into the Asian Pacific Championship. But to the true joy of victory and a ride worthy of the masters belonged to Emil Trinner and Pavel Stantz, whom we see here in true style on their arrival into the stadium. The spectators and organizers were at first in a state of shock, but quickly rewarded our crew with a stormy, enthusiastic applause. And their leap onto the ramp was the hot subject long into the wee hours. It was a dignified finish to a fantastic performance, which brought our boys an excellent ninth place overall, and of course victory in the A2 category, and above all, first place for the world championship of cars with two-wheel drive and an engine capacity less than two liters. Škoda has thereby reinforced its position for the bronze medal in the ongoing championship order. These moments of joy at the rally finish lines have already become a permanent part of Škoda Motorsports activities. And here in New Zealand, even with the disappointing start on the very first day, with Sibera and Gross dropping out, there was still a happy end. Sibera and Gross could at least watch the final from the sidelines, together with the mechanics and the accompanying team members, who also certainly contributed to this result. Second place belonged to Erwin Weber and Manfred Himmer in their Seat. Third to Tajim and Reynolds in the Suzuki Banano. This Japanese-Australian duo is also second in the A2 class. The name Škoda now has a reputation in New Zealand, even if the name of our country is still confusing for most people. Great win for Škoda and for Czechoslovakia, Emil Trina and Havel Stang for the raising of the 
Czechoslovakian flag and also picking up the manufacturer's award and please the national anthem of Czechoslovakia. First overall, the World Formula 2 classification, the two-litre class in the Skoda, Emil Trina and Pavel Stang. This rally being a round of the World Formula 2 championship, and I know those cars gave a lot of people big thrills over the past four days. Ladies and gentlemen, there they are, the, there they are, the place getters, the World Formula 2 championship round here in New Zealand. Well, of course, I'm very happy with the results, although I'm sorry for the Sibra Gross crew, because after they dropped out, it was a tense question whether the second competing car would make it at all, and this was psychologically very exhausting. But this conclusion, which brought us victory in the two-wheel drives, in another contest in the series for the World Championship of Makes, is an excellent result, and I'm very happy with it.